to DC Today. Uh, Brian Seitel here with you. It's February 22nd, which is Wednesday. And I'll kind of kick us off here and go through the market on the day, which was um, quite a bit uh, uh, less volatile than yesterday, which, which, I'll, which I'll take and I'll kind of go through. Um, we ended up closing down a little over 80 points on the day. Um, although for most of the day, the market was up probably 50 points. It was just kind of a quiet day. We were basically with a kind of a lull in economic activity, really just waiting to see what the Federal Reserve minutes were going to reveal from their last meeting, which is now a full three weeks old from February 1st and kind of what they discussed. And we know that they raised rates 25 basis points, but the market was really just sort of in a holding pattern until that data was released, which is around two o'clock or so um, Eastern. So, um, so we closed slightly lower, uh, meaning that we lost a little ground following the minutes and I'll sort of go in to, um, to them and go through them. Um, the S&P was down fractionally 0.16%. The NASDAQ actually closed positive, which was the first day in four that eked out a little bit of a gain of about 0.13%. Rates um, came, came down a little bit today. They were up significantly, like I mentioned yesterday. Um, came off a little bit. The 10-year closed at 393 which was down a couple basis points on the day. Um, and pretty much across the curve, we traded a little, either a little sideways or the bias was just a little bit to the downside on interest rates. Um, the top performing sector was materials, um, but not by a lot, you know, two thirds of a percent. And real estate was, was the lagger today down over 1%. Um, so let's get into the minute. So basically, we know they raised 25 basis points, we the the minutes basically said um, a few uh, of the participants had a um, goal of raising at 50 basis points, and we know that it was um, that it was uh, Mester and Bullard, and and I, I'm assuming when they said a few, maybe that means another one other person, maybe like Waller, um, but for the most part, pretty unanimous across the board. They wanted to kind of go to slower, gradual pace. They want to see how all of this monetary policy is actually affecting the economy before going too far. Um, and, uh, and so that was pretty much what markets expected, which is why they didn't really move. They were, it was quiet day following yesterday into this thing. And then it was basically quiet afterwards, slight bias to the downside, but not very much. And again, 80 points is not a whole lot. Um, and, and, and again, I think it was largely in line. Um, there was some comments separate from the minutes from um, St. Louis president, James Bullard. Um, earlier this morning um, that was geared more towards, you know, in his view, having a, a Fed funds terminal rate of around, you know, 5.375%, um, which Fed funds futures are basically pricing that in now. So, you know, that's pretty much in line. But um, he basically said the market had overpriced in um, the chances for a recession or a slowdown, meaning he, he what he's saying is, is that economic growth is actually really pretty good. And he's not too worried about that. Um, he also, and again, he's, you know, as Fed presidents are, you know, they're in the soft landing camp that they're going to get it just perfectly right. But they're basically saying that they don't have to destroy the labor market completely um, or even hurt it much in order for them to bring down inflation. And um, and I think that that is fine. Um, there was some news. Oh, the Biden administration um, is kind of narrowing down uh, Lyle Brainerd's replacement. And it looks like Diane and Everly and Carpenter all of which in different ways in different periods served under Obama in the Treasury Department. Um, so, so they're kind of working on that. She, she basically, um, so we, we, more to come there. Um, some other news, and, and I feel for anybody traveling, I, as everyone knows, I travel a lot. Um, so there's a certain place in my heart that kind of goes out, but there was about 1,100 flights canceled today. It's just frigid across two thirds of the country. It's a big storm, I know. Where I have a house out in Park City, they got over two feet yesterday of new snow. Um, but uh, but I know a lot of people were so somewhat stranded. Um, I did add a chart in today's DCT um, DC today that just is showing you the the absolute yield on the one year Treasury right now, north of five percent, and it it hasn't been over that yield uh, for over twenty years. So it's two thousand and one, and there was some kind of neat comparisons between the market then versus now. My point to showing that was not to say that it's it's like 2001 necessarily, because if you remember back then, you know, we had a shallow recession we were dealing with and a bunch of other factors, Gulf War and things. Um, so so not not 
compared to comparing the time period, but just the absolute yield of, of 5%. We haven't seen it in over 22 years. Um, and so the, the old, uh, you know, Tina, um, acronym that this, uh, there is no alternative. Um, I, I think that is at this point pretty much out the window because there is an alternative. You can basically get 5% on a riskless or a risk-free investment in a one-year treasury. And so that is pulling market money out of markets. We're seeing the velocity of money slow down and pull, you know, pull back and actually go a little negative here. And, uh, and we're seeing risk assets, risk assets struggle here a little bit. Um, and, and I don't know that it means anything other than somewhat of a range here as we kind of go through things, but you know, the, we just got to keep an eye on, on all of these different things. Um, I added a, a question that I just got, I think yesterday or today from, from a client about the volatility index. Cause I mentioned it yesterday, um, being that, you know, high, it was up a lot yesterday. So I have a, just a definition of what it is, what it means, why we pay attention to it. Um, it has gone up the last couple of days, but it isn't really very high is the best way I can describe it. So I pay attention to it, um, but we're not dealing with a, a, a highly volatile market, number one, and then also technically um, a very fear-driven market. I, to me, it feels a little complacent, frankly, in, in markets. Um, and so whether that changes here over time, we'll have to kind of kind of pay attention to. But I'm keeping it a little short today. Tomorrow we have um, some jobless claims that are going to come out and then a revision of Q4 GDP, um, which is expected to be unchanged. So we've got some more um, data tomorrow to kind of go through. But the takeaway from today is Fed minutes basically revealed what we thought they would. And uh, markets kind of were, were fairly benign on the day. And so I'm going to leave it there for you today. David was quoted in, on CNBC. I have a link there. You can check out check out what he said about yesterday's sell-off as far as it pertaining to interest rates. But um, I'll let you get back to your evenings. I appreciate you listening very much. Um, reach out as always with any questions. I love them. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.